Okay, tonight we're going to be learning about how to turn triangle patterns into potential profit. So let's get started. Chart patterns are well documented in technical analysis literature and are based on the psychological phenomena that occur between buyers and sellers of financial instruments in liquid markets. Pattern formation do not form a trading system. Okay, I'm going to try. Okay, guys, I tried everything I can to, to get the voice started. Um, I think it should be working now. Okay, here we go. I, I, I don't know what the problem was here, but it's an internet thing. Okay, so chart patterns are well documented in technical analysis literature. I'm sure you've heard about chart patterns. You've heard about head and shoulders and even Batman wings and flying saucers and double tops and triple tops and head and shoulders and rectangles and all this stuff. You know, no matter what you trade, how you trade, whether you're an online trader, whether you're trading CFDs, whether you're trading Forex, whether you're trading cryptocurrencies, chart patterns are well established. Now, to, in order to have a complete understanding of chart pattern trading, we should also gain a good understanding of one of the most common art on chart formations. What I am referring to in tonight's class is triangles. Now, I am the king of triangle trading. I trade, I don't use indicators and oscillators. I use price action, support and resistance, and chart patterns. That is it. That's my entire trading plan for finding out, finding a trading opportunity for entering the markets. You know, there's lots of other things for risk management, profit and loss, and all the other stuff. But I love chart patterns. Now, a triangle pattern is my favorite. I don't use all the other patterns. I only use triangles. Now, a triangle pattern is a specific figure formed on the price chart, typically identified when the tops and the bottoms of price action are moving towards each other like the sides of a triangle. When the upper and the lower level of the triangles intersect, traders expect an eventual breakout. So let's define a triangle. You all remember what triangles were like when we were kids in school? It's two lines moving it at, at different degree angles that intersect each other. And we have a base. I don't remember we had in school isosceles triangle. We had 90 degree triangles. We had all these things. In the trading industry, we have three, what they standardize is three different kinds of triangles. Let me pop them up on your screen, actually. We have an ascending, a descending, and a symmetrical triangle. That makes it a little bit easier, but. Let's get my chart patterns up here. There we go. So as you can see on your screen, in chart patterns, we have double bottoms, bull flags, bull pennants, descending wedges, ascending wedges, bear, bear pennants, expanding wedges. Okay. As I said, I don't trade. I don't look for, to me, a double bottom, especially in our type of trading. 
is meaningless because price goes up and down, up and down, up and down, hitting a top and a bottom real quickly and makes double bottoms all the time. Bull flags are just channels. A bull pennant is a triangle. An ascending wedge, based on our definition, of two, two lines moving in different degrees that will intersect is a triangle. Because I don't want to know whether it's an ascending wedge, a descending wedge. I don't want to know if it's symmetrical. All I care about is it's a triangle. No, we have a descending wedge. We have an expanding wedge. Now, there's all kinds of known patterns, head and shoulders, cups and handles. But we're only concerned with something that goes like this, something that goes like that, something that goes like this. Okay. Two lines that will intersect each other eventually. We don't want to get involved in preordained divine intervention that when these two kind of angles come together, this is what's going to happen in the world, and this is the trade you should be taking because that's going to lead you down to losing a lot of money. Okay. It's almost like memorizing all the different patterns you see in Japanese candlesticks. When somebody tells you this candle and that candle, when they appear next to each other, you should buy because it's going to be a continuation. <laughs> well, how do you know that? There's too many things and too many other random circumstances. Now, triangles, once you've identified them, are great for trading because certain things happen when we have triangles. If we have the support and the resistance area moving towards each other and contracting towards each other, only one of two things can happen. We can have, well, yeah, we can have a break. When we get a breakout, we can either have a break up or we can have a breakdown. And see with this triangle, we had no idea which way it was going to go until it did what it did. But if you watch the price as it's nearing the edge of the triangle, Something will tell us what is happening. Okay. When you see that breakout and you can verify that it is a valid breakout, you can then trade in the direction of the break, not some preconceived notion. Both of these triangles on here would have given you excellent trading opportunities. Now here we had a breakout and it went back and stayed sideways, but eventually moved in an up pattern, an uptrend, and we could have made some nice profit from here to there. It would not have broken below our stop loss, and I'll show you shortly how we used the triangle to set our stop loss, and we would have sat in our trade. Here, it was an instantaneous thing, and it was a sore. Nobody could have predicted this run of the market, but you would have still made nice profit and been very lucky when you had this huge upward movement. Now, all of these that you're looking at are live charts. These are not graphics that were designed for this class. Now, here in Bitcoin Tether, look at this beautiful developed triangle. Now, this is on a daily chart. Okay. We've combined this with a MACD and an RSI crossover. That tells us we now, at that point, we had a trading opportunity when we could, and here we had a false breakout. And then price moved back in the triangle and broke lower. Now, how do we define that false breakout? Because we have a bullish crossover with MACD telling us to buy. We have RSI moving above the 30 to the 40 level, telling us the momentum is moving in our direction. Because we don't look at triangles as preordained. We wait for the breakout and then we verify the breakout. And we verify this breakout with three candles. Now, I'm a very conservative trader. So how do you verify it with three candles? Your first candle is the candle that breaks outside of the triangle. 
Your second candle is your confirmation candle. That second candle must stay outside of that triangle. And your third candle would be the trade candle. You would initiate your trade based on the breakout candle after it was confirmed. In this case, guess what? You got no confirmation. So you would have never made this bullish trade, even though everything was telling you to trade, to take a buy. Now we also can use our candles to set our stop losses and our take profits. Why do we need that? Because we need to calculate ahead of time our risk reward ratio so that we can even decide if we could, by our rules, consider making this trade. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. And then I'm going to take you over here and show you something very unique on this chart. And this is a current Euro US dollar chart. Now I'm not advising a trade on the Euro US dollar. I don't, I, you know, I'm not here initiating in. Tonight we're only looking at triangles. That's all that we're here for. And this is my standard teaching chart is the Euro US dollar chart. So let's disclaim that because I don't know what you guys heard in the beginning and where we got volume back or not. So hold on, let's go back to my PowerPoint. So as I said, there are different kinds of, of triangles that can be seen on a price chart. Before you jump into a triangle trading, you should understand the differences between the formations. We've gone over this. Okay. But the symmetrical triangle is a triangle with each line, the support and resistance lines are moving at the same degree. So they're forming that beautiful, perfect triangle. Then when we get a breakout, in fact, for all, all triangle patterns, our breakout, when we get the breakout, we would estimate our movement or our target point equal to the width of where the triangle, the base of the triangle. So if it's a bullish move, we would estimate it this way. If it's a bearish move, we would estimate it that way. This is where the breakout momentum should carry you. Now we need this because we need to be able to set our risk reward targets. Now, the thing that you have to remember is even though you use the base of the triangle, if you have a major support or resistance level before that, you need to reduce your target to right below that support or resistance level. If you're using Fibonacci's, you need to, see whether their breakout is 50%, 75, and go only to that next level. You cannot make it sure that even though the base is this wide, if there's not a stumbling point in the middle. Then we have ascending and descending triangles. One happens off of an uptrend, the other happens off of a downtrend. Same exact thing. You can only make the trade when the breakout happens, and you use the base to determine your take profit level. Very easy, base, take profit level. Now, pennants and charts have a similar shape to that of symmetrical triangles. They typically appear during trends and have a trend continuation character. So remember, we have symmetrical triangles, we have wedges, we have pennants, we have decreasing wedges. Now, how do we set our stop loss? Okay, our stop loss would be set at the swing low established before the breakout. Our buy pattern would be equal to the breakout close of the breakout candle. So you have the breakout candle, which was the candle that broke out. Then you have the confirmation candle, 
and then you would initiate your buy at the breakout level or you know above that when in that third candle. So here it's detailed on the chart. Base of the triangle here. Let me just get my marker on here so you can see better. Breakout. Confirmation candle. Doesn't matter whether it's red or green, as long as it remained outside of the candle. Entry level. As soon as it reached the breakout point of this candle. Limit would be equal to, or our take profit point would be equal to this base. And our stop loss set slightly below the swing low before the breakout. Now, when you calculate your risk reward ratio, you have your entry point. Now, if this, if you set this trade up and this candle went back in there, the trade would never be executed. If you execute here, and price goes up, you're fine, you're in profit. If it turns against you and goes down, you're stopped out in a short bit. Okay. So you have once the tr one probability the trade is executed makes profit. Two, the trade is never executed. Three, the trade moves against you. Four, the trade moves back in and even though it can't get executed. Hold on, I just want to clean up my screen. There we go. Now, most of you will have the same problem I had okay, when I first started trading candles, and that's seeing them, finding them, and saying, how do you set them up? Well, thank God today for modern technology. So let's go over back to some live charts. And right now you see right on this chart, three triangles. Well, they just went away. Guess what? I didn't look for them. I never have to look for them anymore. Because today most HTML and Java charts will allow you to just tell the system to put the triangle chart patterns on your charts. And there we go. My charts or my computer has automatically found and located these three charts for me. And what do I have? Three nice candlesticks. Now, see if you notice here, we have trading camp, we had the breakout here. We didn't actually, our confirmation candle stayed out, but we would have executed this trade, but it never went anywhere. Okay. There's a good chance it would have never, eh, probably might have gotten executed. No, but a chance it never got executed. Okay. But it stayed above. You wouldn't have had a losing trade if it actually got executed, but it didn't go anywhere. The one thing about triangles, it doesn't guarantee you where they're going to go. Because remember what I said to you, if there's a major level of support or resistance, you have to rethink where your target point is. And this 105,874 is a major resistance level. That's why it's in gold and in big dashes on my charts. Okay, So I would have never set my stop loss. I would have never set my target point here. My stop loss would have been down here. So we can see more clearly when we drop it down to a one hour chart. I don't think our trade would have ever been executed, so it would have been fine. But see again here, as price moved, it broke out of the, the it broke out of the triangle but was never able to break out and gain the momentum to get the down trade. So even though we saw the breakout, it never got confirmed, so we never traded it. Then when it turned around, went up, 
we actually got the confirmation. We could have executed the trade here and made a little bit of profit moving up there. A nice trade. So, I'm just trying to see this in a short term for you. So there are lots of possibilities with triangles. Triangles are very dependable if you follow these rules because you're not risking anything. You're not doing anything but watching the triangle. So what are we doing? We're watching for the breakout. This is a breakdown. We would enter at the close. We would set up our entry point at the close of the breakout candle but we still have to wait for the confirmation and then wait for our trade to be executed. So once again, here we have a breakout. We have a base of our candlestick. We have a base of our triangle. We take this base and drop it on here to get our limit order. Okay, we have our breakout right here. We wait for our next candle, which remains outside the triangle, and we would have executed our trade right there. And we would have made nice little profit riding all the way down here past our limit. So the fact is, I've done a lot of studies on candles over time. Okay, And the fact is, trading is all about moving the odds in your favor. It's risk management. How do you reduce your risk at all times while getting the most high probability trades? Well, I would rather th throw five trade opportunities in trash can to get one lower risk trade. Now, there's all types of rules out there about triangle patterns. And like I said, they're just like candlesticks. They want to tell you what to do. They want to make you predisposed. Well, I've done some studies. I've tested over and over again to find out, yes, there's a slight gain. If you follow the rules of the candlestick, you know, it's a continuation pattern. will break out up and you should be ready for a buy trade or a continuation of the trend, it becomes 48% wrong, 52% right. Well, that's not enough for me to blindly base my trading decisions. I need to increase my odds and my potential. While there are instances when symmetrical triangles mark important trend reversals, they more often mark a continuation of the current trend. Regardless of the nature of the pattern, continuation reversal, the direction of the next move can only be determined after a valid breakout. So what do we want to look at? Number one, we want to look at the trend. Okay. We want to look at, is this a trend, is this triangle developing in a well-developed uptrend? Or is it a horribly unqualified, ugly trend or movement upward? Okay. The more well-developed the trend is, the more reliable the chart pattern is, the better trade probability. We also want to keep our eye on volume. With the triangle, when the triangle extends and the trading range contracts, as the price moves into the apex of the triangle, we should start to see volume diminish. This is referred to as the storm, the quiet before the storm, or the tightening consolidation before the breakout. When we see this and then we see the breakout and we see a jump in volume, that helps us confirm because you don't follow my three-step rule blindly. There is no blind trading. This is a set of rules, but then what are the other factors? Because 
Otherwise, every trade would be exactly the same and you get rich. Everybody would be right all the time. So there are many other factors. If you said to me, okay, Barry, I had a triangle, the price did this, it confirmed and it broke out and I made my trade. And you didn't look and weren't able to tell me the quality of the trend it developed in. You weren't able to tell me the volume that that was seeing. We didn't see a confirmation with the increase in volume. Okay, and we want to look at the duration of the of the pattern. Was this a long, slow developing triangle? Or was this a triangle that developed over the last few time frames? And where was the breakout? Was the breakout just in the beginning of this triangle? Or was it pushed into the base? Was it really by the end? And now keep in mind breakout direction. The future direction of a breakout can only be determined after the break has occurred. Sounds obvious enough, but attempting to guess the direction of the breakout can be dangerous. Even though a continuation pattern is supposed to break out in the direction of the long-term trend, this is not always the case. A break should be on the closing basis for it to be considered valid. Some traders even apply a price or other filters and to confirm validity. What do we use? We use the next candle stays outside of that pattern to confirm the validity. The breakout should occur with an expansion in volume, especially on upside breakouts. Now, after a breakout, the apex can turn into future support or resistance. The price sometimes, as I showed you in one of those trading experiences, Broke out was confirmed, but then it kind of eased back down and stayed right inside that apex. Did. Okay, and then it finally moved up. Okay, because that apex of the two converging support and resistance lines can become a very crucial price point. And lastly, price targets. As I said, your target is the base of the triangle pattern, except you need to see what is in its way. If there's a very distinct, you know, for instance, we know gold at $2,000 is a very critical price point. If you have a triangle that breaks out and you got to set your target point at $2,020, say $2,005, you can't, you got to roll it down to $1,999 because you know $2,000 is a psychological point. It's a breaking point. You can't just assume it's going to break through there and go up. So to sum it up, triangle patterns are easy to spot and provide good risk reward opportunities. Traders can quickly know that a big move is maybe underway, as well as the profit objective and the amount to be put at risk. Also, where to put your stop loss. Now that you have the knowledge of the three powerful price patterns, you are steps closer to becoming a more confident trader. Now, I'm very sorry about the voice problems in the beginning. I have no idea what caused it. But hopefully we got everything covered. And I thank you very much for joining us. Have a great trading week. Bye now. And yes, some people are writing and can get a recording. No, you can't get a recording. But as I said, maybe you didn't hear it earlier because of the voice problems. But if you use the same link you come, you came to this live class, in about 24 hours, it will direct you automatically to watch a recorded version. Thank you very much and have a great trading week. And again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties in the beginning of the class. Good night now.